Hey everyone, I hope you are all well. You've seen the title of the video. It's going to be about how to control your emotions so that they do not control you. Now, I am speaking from a position of experience. I feel like in the past, I've actually allowed my emotions to control my actions. And that actually hasn't resulted in a good way that actually hasn't resulted in the desired outcome or in the most productive and the best outcome you know and so that is the reason why I'm talking about this I think when it comes to um, emotions some people many people actually some I'm gonna say some people some people actually do rest in this notion they do rest in this fact that I'm an emotional person. I'm an emotional person. I'm so emotional. And they don't feel as if it's something that actually could potentially be a problem. Now, I definitely would not say that I've ever declared myself to be an emotional person. But when people have told me, it didn't come across from a position of strength. Of course, it's good to feel emotions of course it's not good to be emotionless but when you to declare that I'm an emotional person and to rest in that it's not really the best is it now even though I say that I would never say state that hey I'm an emotional person I can definitely say some of my actions have been emotional some decisions I've made have actually been emotional and have not served me well so that's the reason why i feel like it's important to be able to control your emotions so that they do not control you now if you are the person who you say that you know you are an emotional person you have to ask yourself is this actually helping me is me being an emotional person actually helping me or is it hindering me from maybe moving forward or connecting with someone or hearing somebody else's point of view because i feel i'm emotional and if you're maybe somebody like me who kind of feels but has not really identified themselves as emotional but has made certain decisions that potentially could have been controlled a bit better to have a better outcome then you have to ask yourself how can I control this how can I deal with this better so the first step to actually controlling your emotions so that they do not control you is just to kind of sit with what you're feeling identify that hey I'm feeling these emotions now and I want to be able to handle them better. What can I do to handle them better? Sit with what you're feeling, identify them. Don't just ignore them because they could come back in a bigger way and cause even more problems. Sit with what you're feeling, identify. The next step would be to actually get them out in a good way, not to act irrationally or what you might think of as rationally, not to just act on them, but to kind of express them in a way that kind of has them in front of you. So you can actually look at those emotions from um, another perspective. So that would involve something such as journaling. If you can actually get into the habit of journaling, that will actually help you express these emotions so you can read them. And sometimes things look different when they're written down than to when they're locked up inside of you and looking at them from a different perspective and through getting them out in front of you just so you, just think of it's just so that you can view it from a different perspective because sometimes that's just what it takes there are different ways to get out your emotions in front of you if you're in a situation where you actually do need to make a decision where there are emotions involved perhaps you can go to somebody trusted and express these emotions to them so that literally somebody else is looking in on the situation and they can give you their opinion on it that could also be quite helpful if you're still in the midst of dealing with emotions and not necessarily being an emotional person but just kind of like me just kind of like you feel this and you feel that and something has happened and it's kind of steering you in another direction definitely consider the impact perhaps of something that has happened in the past that you can refer to not that every situation is the same but consider like okay so when I was feeling this way at that point I made this decision or I made this action I felt this way and I did this and even though it felt right in the moment and I kind of I went with my gut I went with my my feeling what was the impact of it was it good was it bad was the result just by chance could I have ended up in a worse place but I just by chance I ended up in a good place I feel like that kind of looking at the impact of your emotions in the past 
kind of gives you a guideline especially like if you're in an introspective person like me and you're just able to just you're just able to be very honest with yourself this can actually be very helpful if you aren't able to be honest with yourself definitely do that work because being honest with yourself will help you to get to a place where you can actually look at your past actions you can actually look at those emotions and it can bring you to a place where now you're able to make a decision here based on um not based on but considering exactly how things panned out in that situation that helps that really really helps being honest with yourself <laughs> it leads to a lot of good a lot, a lot of good a lot of good results another thing is which is probably my final point because i really want to give this to you you know in a solid nugget another thing is to consider your path to stay on course sometimes when something happens along the path it hurts you or it affects you in a certain way and causes you to make a decision based on a temporary situation that actually affects you in the long term but if you're on your path and you actually see into the distance if you actually see into the distance you will be able to stay on course regardless of the events that happen along the way so how do you get on this path I think getting on this path involves you being honest with yourself, sitting down, identifying what do I want to achieve now in the short term, in the long term. That, that is your path. Once you've identified that, you have a path. And then it's your responsibility, it's your duty to yourself to stay on that path. So even when things happen along the path, you're able to stay on the path. You're able to stay on that course. And I believe having a path, having a course, staying on course, remembering the course, setting the course will help you combat emotions that come to distract you. We must be able to feel, we must be able to be, to feel emotions but not be um, controlled by them. And I am speaking from experience. I think there are situations in which I could have navigated better if I had stayed on my course, on my path. This is why I'm here today sharing this message with you because I really want you to understand that yes, you might be an emotional person but your emotions do not have to control you. And yes, you might be like me, somebody who perhaps has allowed emotions to take control despite not being an emotional person or like labeling themselves as an emotional person. I'm not labeling myself as an emotional person because why? I don't think that's necessary at all. And it's just not me. I think if it's you, then it's just you. If it's not you, then it's just not you. I'm not saying any is worse than the other. I'm just saying that's that. So that's why I'm sharing this message with you today. And I hope this is helpful for somebody. Don't let things take you off course. Don't let things which are very fleeting, temporary things take you off course stay on your path be honest with yourself set your goals and you'll be able to control your emotions much better be honest with yourself and care about yourself first you know care about yourself care about everything care, like, care about your path you know care about your path you know all right guys well i'll see you in my next one bye